Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Third Party. Really excited to be here. I'm Sydney. I'm Savannah. And I'm Samantha. And thanks so much for tuning in and joining us today. So today we need to admit something. We have a secret that we've been keeping from you guys. And it's that we were a part of a cult. <laughs> Which, okay, obviously that's not, we weren't actually a part of a cult. But this is a part of our life and childhood that I feel like we never really talk about. And you might be wondering why we're bringing up something that happened 15 years ago in the past. But I promise it comes full circle. But in actuality, the real thing we want to talk about is our experience at a private, small Christian school. And again, there, it really has impacted us. So I'm really excited to kind of dig into this topic and tell you all about how that like factors into our life. But before we get into the episode, I do want to give a disclaimer just because I feel like you have to these days. And I just want to explain that we're very grateful to have been given the opportunity to be get a strong education and be in these environments. And it definitely has helped us in so many different ways, but just want to put that out there so things don't get misconstrued because we obviously recognize the privilege that we've had to be able to go to the school. But, okay, let's start. I feel like it would be helpful to just kind of set the scene and explain to you all like, what this school was and kind of describe it to people because there's so many different like religious schools. And unless you've experienced this one, you might have a different vision in your head. Like you might be envisioning like the Britney Spears, like Catholic girl school. And that was not the experience we had. Britney Spears. No, Britney Spears. I was like, Britney Spears Catholic school? I'm thinking about the Britney Spears, like hit me baby one more time video oh, or something where she's yeah. like, oh, I thought you meant, I was thinking more like people are like thinking about like Gilmore Girls. Okay. Like, I don't watch that show, but um, oh, that's a better example. Like a uh, gossip girl, like those types I'm of thinking about religious. People are thinking, but even religious, like people are thinking about a Catholic type of like very posh and i think it's like you say religious private school people think of a more posh environment and that's just not what this was i also think people do have like a stereotype of christian schools as a whole like being super strict you can't wear you wear a uniform the skirt has to be of certain length and that sort of thing i'm not gonna act like that's wrong <laughs> Because it kind of is in some sense. And also Princess Diaries, didn't she go to a little Catholic school? I could be. I don't remember, but I no, think she just went to a private school. Oh, yeah, okay, but okay. I feel like in those schools, more so like with the times. Yeah. Like, right. Like, like you're I feel, not far removed. Yeah, from exactly. Society. So, okay, we can describe the place we went to. And honestly, when I first think about it, I think about the day we started the school because it was first or second semester. For, in first grade, randomly were pulled out of public school and put in this school for. A lot of different reasons, I guess, but yeah. So basically, to start off, um, how we got here in the first place is, and also I feel like can we just say the name it doesn't exist anymore? Oh yeah, it's not even yeah up and running. I, yeah, we can name names here. I mean, we won't name like the anyone's name, like actual names that like a staff member or something. But we can like it doesn't. I feel like we could. You can look up the school. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't even know if you could find Probably no website, but right. it's called Northfield it's, Baptist Christian School. But we'll be referring to it as NBCS the whole time. Basically, um, we went to a public school in Ohio, um, just our local public school, for only about... Um, one semester. One semester. Our parents didn't like it. I feel like the second we got there, they were looking at other options and just seeing what was out there, to be honest. Um, I think my mom's friend um recommended nbcs to her and i don't know how many times they visited or how many times they necessarily shadowed but i think it was just more a word of mouth thing and they're like this is good enough for us this looks like a solid education and we were before we knew it um our second semester of first grade that's where my seven-year-old self and my sisters were taken to this like very remote school and thank god you didn't have to stay there overnight i remember they were talking about opening <laughs> oh, a boarding the night. it's not a boarding school i know i know i said thank god you didn't um this was I in think akron I county it's not, <laughs> right. it's not remote but it felt remote yeah it just the culture felt remote yeah it just was like kind of far away from where we lived it was like a good 45 minute drive it wasn't like that deep maybe more like but, 35 
Okay, like 35, but it wasn't that deep. So basically, um, it was farther away. Just I didn't know any of the kids in that area, but I guess kids from all over went over there. I just remember the energy was just very odd. It was very small. It didn't really look like a traditional school. It looked more like an extension of a church in a school. Which That's what it was. wasn't really, I wasn't like knocking the place, but like I had come from, you know, public school so it wasn't you know I wasn't in a huge castle or anything but it was just it was a little bit jarring to make that transition I remember um I specifically remember carpet being in the gym that was like my first oh my god like where am I type of um moment that I had um and yeah it just it was so interesting because it was kind of like a time capsule it was like everyone was in the 80s like the teachers had on very traditional outfits that, you know, you would see, like, on screen and, like, I don't know, like, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Like, how those teachers looked in that movie, they looked in, like, 2007. So I was just very, I was taken aback. Yeah, I remember the day that we visited the school, did the whole shadowing process and all of that, and to set the scene, too, because I know a lot of people, well, a couple of people, I can think of some people who are Jewish who did this, went to a school that's a part of their temple. And that's how this school was. It was a part of a church that formed a school. So the school was pretty much taught at that church. As well as, yeah, I know Samantha said it was remote. It wasn't like in the middle of the country or anything, but it was still pretty set out there. I think just because we aren't familiar, obviously, feel free to Google this. We grew up in Cuyahoga County, which is like a subset of Cleveland, and this school was in Summit County. Yeah, I think that sums up. You get the vibes. But when we say small, I just want to put into perspective, we aren't talking about 100 students in a grade. We're talking like 20, and it trickled off from there, too. So I think knowing the numbers gives some good context. Yeah, by the end, there were 16. Yeah, like, we should have been one of the ones to go. we're three of 16. Like, that's, anyway. I don't even know if there were 16. Yeah, there were 16. <laughs> it was 16, okay. yeah, in sixth grade yeah. we finally left. But, yeah, it was an experience, I think. It was definitely a cultural one because I felt like it really <laughs> impacted me in the way that I was out of the loop from so many different things. But I think we can get into just some stories from there because there's plenty to tell. Yeah, I remember like first like going to first grade. I was I don't know why I was just afraid of the school as a whole. Like, let's just say like there were a lot of, um, I guess, things you would hear in like you know, those, like, horror stories of those, like, cultish, Christian-y private schools with just, like, l honestly abusive teachers, people getting yelled at, people... Well, I'll, should I say allegedly? <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble. Whatever. I mean, who would sue? They don't even have a school. Right. Like, it's fine. Um, but I just, like, caught those vibes of just a super harsh, strict environment and, like, such, like you obviously couldn't even wear any, like... I remember my shoe had a pink flower on it and I got in trouble and I had to stay in um, the principal's office until my mom came down to get me like new shoes because it like was a Navy, you know, Mary Jane, but it had like a little pink flower. And my mom literally got on the phone. She was like, I'm not driving down so she can just continue class or she can put on someone's gym shoes. And they had me wear gym shoes that were like, white with we have from the lost and found and they were white with pink on it so i was like what do you want like this made it made no sense but it was just like their logic was so interesting and there are just different parts of the school that i think people won't get unless you've been in it like for example we had this thing called catechisms um a lot of catholic schools do which that. is a lot of that's why i said unless you were in yeah. Catholic yeah school because the run of a mill person wouldn't know that they didn't go mm -hmm. um but, you know, it's in a lot of, like, religious-based schools. Just you have to memorize some type of book of some kind, and then that goes towards, you know, like, your grades or your school or some type of tournament or something like that. Very Harry Potter-esque. And we had catechisms that we had to memorize from the top of the year to the bottom of the year. I think by the end of the year, you had at least 90 that you had to just have under your belt. And let's just say that it not, I mean, in my personal opinion, it did teach a lot of intolerance with some of the things that we kind of had to 
in terms of other religions and backgrounds, but you can say your point. Yeah, I wouldn't say it was necessarily the catechisms that did it. I think it's just the culture of the school. So, for example, they were really into the fundamentals. So let's just put that out there. This school, to me, was a boot camp, which I thought was ultimately ended up being good. But when you were young, you were putting in the work. So you had to memorize all the states and stuff. And that was early on. And we had handwriting class. And so the teachers were super strict. You get the vibes. I They also yelled. Like, they would yell at you. So they weren't afraid to be involved in your business. And considering this was a small school, too, I felt like you knew everything about people's personal lives, for better or for worse. Meaning our mom was a main character in there. She and our dad, they were in and out of that school. But, yeah, when it comes to intolerance or what they teach, I think it was more so just the teachers because they definitely were conservative. Like, I don't know who they voted for, but... It was obvious. It was obvious. And I just remember... Uh, one main example was in third grade when Obama won the election, or maybe it was before he won the election. I don't remember specifics. It, it was, was in the midst of it. No, oh, it was in. No, it was, no, you we were getting to the end. Oh, and yeah, oh, of it. Like when he won. Yeah, this is when he oh, won. When he Regardless, won the story that occurred was our teacher uh, made us pray in class in a circle in a circle with the pray for the country out. yeah i think it was in the midst of it pre-election mm -hmm. and like election day and we all had to pray and pray for our country which <laughs> i don't <laughs> know God yeah would lead us into the so, light and lead us to the right direction which i guess you can interpret that however yeah. you want to but we knew the right direction was obama considering the kid in that class the same year came up to me and said my teacher my parents would never oh, vote for a I black president Oh, okay, I, yeah. Because yeah. I was, it's funny because sometimes I'm like, we we all tell stories. I'm like, wait, that didn't I was like, was that me? I don't no, know. That happened to me. Okay, okay. I remember the pencil was, sharpener or something. Our mom was obsessed with the Obama rallies and all that. And I came, we all came to school saying, Obama, oh, wait. Oh, yeah, we were doing we had the most. Just seen him. <laughs> yeah. We had just seen him speak. And so then this boy was like, my parents would never vote for a black president. I'm not even kidding. Our teacher heard. She was probably like, mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she I know that's right. <laughs> yeah, she definitely was. So I feel like getting off of that story, there were a lot of like, but I don't know, is the Fundament. term fundamentals yeah. that were taught to you that are bad. Like, if that Slamming makes the door. sense. Because what really stands out to me, I remember back when we were younger, like any other uh, middle school girl did at this time, Samantha was obsessed with Katy Perry. So basically we had these things called Girls Club at the end of yes. school. And it was a place where we could basically, we were taught basically abstinence, which I'm sure all these schools teach. Yeah, it's nothing And new. we were just taught to so basically cross your legs and periods are embarrassing, hide that as much as you can. Um, if you need to figure that out, figure it out. What Like that type of vibe. And we were talking about music and stuff. And we were basically talking about music and garbage in, garbage out. That was her whole sermon for the day. And basically, I think she had overheard me talking to my friend Taylor at the time saying, oh my gosh, I love like hot and cold or whatever I was saying. And she knew the song, so. I'm just, uh, well, they probably play it on the radio. It, 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 garbage in, oh, garbage, yeah. whatever. Gar so, no, she was just saying if you listen to garbage, you'll be garbage. She probably didn't even yeah, listen yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah. Right. She didn't listen. She probably Maybe like, she heard it. Yeah, she probably store. saw it. Yeah, she probably on magazine. turned back to NPR and was like, sinful. I don't, I don't think NPR was No, that's too, that's too that's politically. <laughs> yeah. but anyway. Probably classical music, whatever. Basic or The Fish, that radio station. But basically, she like called me out in class and she was all like, so Samantha, if you keep listening to Katy Perry, that song, those are, you're basically going to go to hell. So I was like, what? Okay. <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel like we were really involved in people's lives too. Like, how does she even know you listen to Katy Perry besides you talking about it in class? I felt like I the, don't. I, I I never talked about that. Stuff yeah, I'm saying so probably she talking to a friend. She right. overheard it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Class because she was probably the she was the gym teacher. Yeah, I feel like we were so. involved in her business too. Like we were talking yeah. about her dating life and everything. So Can I tell yeah. another quick story about this teacher. I remember how we all had to go up, say the Pledge of Allegiance, like any other kid has to do. And I don't know, you might have gotten in trouble for this at a public school too. I, I remember so. I was holding the American flag and then I sneezed and I accidentally a corner touched the ground and she went off on me. She was like, that's so disrespectful. You're never holding it. She was like, that's treasonous. Oh my gosh. God and our country, all this stuff. I'm like, yeah, I, I remember feeling so sad. No, same. you would get shamed at this school. And I honestly yeah. feel like, in a way, like, we're the nicest people ever. Me, <laughs> hyping us up. But we're very nice people if you've met us. 
But in this school, for some reason, I felt like we were made to be like bullies and seen as bad by both teachers and yeah. parents, which to me is very interesting because that's like very uncharacteristic. Yeah. I remember we had an art teacher. We even told our parents that we were disrespectful and spoke that's back to her. Right. And I didn't Mrs. Even know. Johnson. Oh, that was her. That's, that's not, not her name. name. Oh, wasn't no, that, that was not. It was not Johnson. I don't remember her name. So like, I could, I could see. I can see her. I can see her. It was not. Yeah, Johnson. but she was always like saying that we brown. were rude, and I don't know why our parents believed that because that was completely false. But yeah, that's just one of the many examples of getting in trouble. Let me know if you guys agree with this or not. But I also feel like one of the reasons why we got in trouble was because we questioned everything. Because I remember one day in class, we were told that Nelson Mandela was a terrorist and just things like that. And I remember going home to my mom and telling her, she was like, no, like, what? Why are they teaching you that? But then our mom would teach us again. Like, she would be like, oh, actually, we're going to learn about him on our own. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, exactly. So. Um, so she would be like re-educating us on stuff, but they are paying for the school to teach your kids bad things. So I don't know, do with that as well. But um, I remember after that, we came into school saying something like Nelson Mandela wasn't a terrorist and all this stuff. He so. believed in uh, mitigating apartheid. <laughs> I remember. And then um, like when I say like that was our death sentence, like I think you got in trouble. Like yeah, the band I got in trouble for that. I don't even remember. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but... Um, in terms of just like day to day life, it was really interesting because you just had to be, I don't know. I feel like it's like the run of the mill school. I would just say like, there are so many instances. Like, I feel like we should talk about the really big ones yeah, that are actually insane. On to the- um, and we can go into more detail about those as well because, um, there are parts of it where definitely there'd be, if we are in any other environment, lawsuits would be happening. Like, the first thing I can think of is in fifth grade, if we're gonna <laughs> get into it, um, keep in mind that diversity, honestly, for the class sizes, was, pretty good. was honestly pretty good. Like, compared to the next school we went off to, diversity was a lot better than the private school that we finished our high school education they with. They were trying to keep these little black kids in But check. let's just, <laughs> yeah, let's just say oh, that the the they were not, out of the 16, they just did not like the black kids. Like, you just weren't, unless you were one of the quote-unquote good ones, you were not, like, you weren't respected. So, basically, um, in fifth grade, our classroom or whatever was under construction. So we had, which I know some people in other schools have this too, where you have a trailer, essentially, especially in the Midwest. So you have to go down to that trailer, learn in there, and then come back out. And then you can do gym and lunch and all of that. But your main classroom is in the trailer. And we <laughs> were in going to the trailer. And I think a few of us, my sisters, uh, somehow all the black girls, my sisters, um, two other of our friends that were black, and the, actually three black girls with us had left our snow boots in no, the main... No, it was main... our coat. I remember yeah, it was our, coat. our coats. I remember this. Oh, our yeah. coats. I remember what happened. Okay, our coats. In the main but school. Um, and basically, our fifth grade teacher at the time, he was a creep. Like, let's just keep it all the way. He was just a... He was an interesting man. And this... Bo- the other only black boy um, was just chilling in the corner. And he was like, okay, I'll bargain with you guys. Um, In order for you guys to get your jackets and your winter coats, you guys have to stand in line in front of the class and in front of him. And one by one, give this little black boy a hug, which he's like not lucky, but hug compared to all horrible other things that he could have done is people be like, oh, well, maybe that's not that bad if you're crazy. But keep in mind, we're in fifth grade, and that's actually, like, that's, like, nothing. This just was an idea he had. Like, and nothing brought this up. <laughs> yeah, it didn't. No, this it was, couldn't be a little side hug either. No, it had to be a period. forward <laughs> face. No, it's just, I'm just saying, some I people know. are crazy no, on I the internet. It. But, I'm, oh, it had to be a, <laughs> I'm, like, hitting the mic. It had to be a forward-facing hug in front of him who's over here watching us. And when I say we told our parents, we each had to like give him a hug, then we got our boots. And I remember just feeling like dirty, like I had done something wrong, crazy. I mean, they did preach abstinence, so you felt like touching people was bad. Right, I was like, isn't this what we weren't learning? This wasn't what I thought was 
the the way to heaven, but whatever. Then when I say we're in the car, we're telling our mom, like, oh, yeah, to get our coats, we had to hug this kid, and then we got our coats, which is very weird. My mom, before the sentence was over, she turned the yeah, car she got 180 around so quick. so quick. We weren't even five minutes out the driveway. And all the parents, like, came that well, all the black mm -hmm. parents, which was so... Mm -hmm. Only, like, one only parent. Only one other parent. Others didn't care. And that's why I think oh, that's with a lot of these cultures, I feel like people don't speak up because they don't want to be the one to create yeah. controversy because I felt like we did have a target on our back after that incident. Oh, Actually, no, probably no. before that, so it didn't really matter. It didn't uh, I think after there was a difference. But it made yeah. it worse than there it already was. was. And I also think, too, lines were very blurred at this school because I remember one of the girls who was involved, meaning had hugged the other student, her mom was super close to this teacher, so she wasn't going to say anything. And I feel like it wasn't uncommon at this school for teachers and parents to be friends in the way that you'd be going over. They the would be houses. going over to their homes for right. like dinner and all of that, which honestly, at school, I don't think that's appropriate. But, <laughs> yeah, you can keep the school yes, at school. Yes, exactly. So I remember she didn't even say anything. She was fine with her kid. Well, not fine with it, maybe. But she just didn't care enough to say I'll anything say or felt uncomfortable. Yeah, that's yeah, what I'm saying. Like that's why even though we think, oh, lawsuits would be filed, they wouldn't. This is exactly what that's happened. True. Right, but I'm saying it, this could have been a story, like an actual, like if it was the right, I mean, just the wrong one that he chose to mess with in terms of like an institution or whatever, it could have been much worse. So he's really, he's lucky that it was in a, it a was private at that school. school. Cause I, a Did public he, school, he would have been. Yes, I, I, he would have been know. out. Yes, he would. There's I no think, way. So I think I hope he, he would have been out. But that's not public. I know, but I'm but just saying, cause I remember, Solon, he I think at Solon, there's no home. way. There's no okay. way. Well, wait, did he ever end up apologizing to us? I'm trying to remember yeah, what nah, ended up. No, he was just crying. Us. He had a he, red face. Yeah, I remember he was crying. So I feel like something happened. He just glared at us. He glared at us through the car window. And it was so When I wasn't the one who did it, he did. Yeah. Oh, I did not care. Yeah, I I thought not enough justice was served so I was kind of annoyed I remember like just sitting and being like hmm, nothing happened I'm bored. also I'm embarrassed for the kid who had to get hugged like I feel like if I were yeah. his parents I would have been in there too but they weren't yeah oh well also guys it wasn't like this guy was single he was married and his wife stood by him yeah That's she that was her man <laughs> yeah she was gonna stick beside there was a lot of families to like husband wife teams yeah. in the school so and they were both teachers yeah That's they're the all involved part. all the spouses were teachers so think about like if there's one kid they don't like and you go up a grade you're just then you're automatically again. not like you don't need a sibling to like ruin your reputation before you like they already are talking <laughs> right, you about might you get a year to breathe right back. <laughs> yeah Another story that I was thinking about, even though this happened to Samantha, so you can tell it if you'd like, uh, is the year after we had a teacher who did something questionable. So so if you were an OG listener, you listened to our third episode. We covered this in our hair podcast um, episode. But basically, keep in mind, this is a year after. So already this to me, this teacher was a little bit weird in my personal opinion. I'll never forget when we had like this happened before even this huge hair incident. Um, we were doing spelling words and he wrote down, Samantha glared at Taylor. And I will never oh, forget yeah. that. And I was like, why would he write that for no reason? Like, I'm not glaring at anybody. I'm staring at the wall trying to just memorize stuff. So already I just felt like he was a little off when it came to me specifically. And when we had spelling words, um, there was synthetic was one of our spelling words, super advanced, S Y N. Okay. But basically, um, he wrote down, um, Samantha's hair is synthetic. Obviously that's going to fly over a lot of kids ha heads because people aren't really attributing, like attributing hair to being fake at that time, unless it was like an actual wig, like a Halloween costume wig. And, um, people like, huh? And then he just goes on to drive that point home and says, yeah, like your hair is fake. That's not your hair, is it? Just staring me like dead in my soul. And I was like, what? And immediately it's so sad because my first um, reaction was shame. I remember I put my head down on the desk, which I wish I did not do that, but I was 11, so I'll give myself a break. But I put my head down like this and I hid my face. And then um, I, I, rem I just remember my first reaction. And then Sydney and Samantha were like, oh, 
So what? What? Like you guys were like outraged, but you didn't say anything yet because we couldn't. Like the yeah, no class. When I say it was like the class erupted, he was like Dave Chappelle up there. Like people were like, "Oh my gosh!" Like knee slapping. Like she's she wearing a wig. wig. I remember someone. Said and then that. people. I remember she's... specifically who said. Me I remember too. too. I can see his face now. <laughs> <laughs> but he was like, "She's wearing a wig," and it was a whole thing. And then we made it a point, especially like the black girls. When I say. I don't know if we were just like trauma bonded or whatever, but we would make it a point to like do things in front of the teacher to show that we were annoyed with it. Okay, but the whole class was black. There were only two girls who weren't. In no, our grade. the girl, the girls, yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm saying the girls, not yeah, class anyway. Yeah, the girls. Like we yeah. went in front of his desk during our snack time, like we right after. About- and we were like, that was crazy. So rude and inappropriate. I remember someone said that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just Same. so inappropriate. Why would you say that? And then he was just like sitting he at the desk knew. sweating. Oh, like, he heard? Yeah. He oh, he heard was. and we knew he heard. And um then obviously I feel like we had one huge racial incident a year with our parents and having to come down to the school yeah. to a point where they 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 act like it was an inconvenience on their part Maybe instead of our parents. Racial, part. Just incidents as a whole. There incidents as a whole. Like there was always something. And we told this story again, didn't leave the driveway, turned right back around, circle right back around. And I remember my mom, she like wanted me to learn how to advocate for myself and to honestly, if I felt like even an adult had wronged me, get that apology and have them say it with their chest because she pulled me into that classroom. It was honestly insane. And it's just this grown man in his late forties. He was in his sixties. Yeah, he was older than that. Oh, sixties? Okay, I'll give it. Okay, I'll I'll say. Actually, maybe so. He knew better. Okay, I'll say fifties. I'll say fifties. He might not have been better. Right. Um, he was like, you could tell he had been crying or was super embarrassed because his eyes were kind of red, and he was just he he had been going through some emotions, and she made him apologize to me like face to face and be like and he was like i heard you guys talking at snack time and that's when i realized i had messed oh, up oh yeah i was like that's when you realized anyways um <laughs> you should have realized on my reaction yeah. like you knew it was well, negative he said it right and then he was like and like god wouldn't like that or something i was like okay um i was like cool but the samantha wears a wig that lasted until i graduated so i mean yeah, Damn, it ha- it had lasting effects. Also, guys, I want you to keep in mind too. He was one of the nicer, nicest. Yeah, he was one yeah, of my favorite yeah. ones. He was one then. of my yeah. He was, yeah. The, he was one guy. of the best ones by far. Because I'm trying to think of everybody else. There was our fourth grade teacher who was also nice, but you had to walk on eggshells with him. But remember, you didn't know what was said. Yeah, I was saying fourth, fourth grade, grade was, was bullying. Tragic. That's oh, great. She turned sour. He was crazy so too. it was like mm-hmm. everybody. No, she was nice all throughout second grade. Our second grade teacher. Yeah, but she then after she ended up being mean. That's what I'm saying. So she was no longer my favorite post. So it's not very crazy. Christian like to be mean. I mean, yeah. yeah. But I feel like, I don't know, I feel like a running joke is, especially when people talk about the Christian community, that they aren't good people. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I feel like I can't, like, yeah. we have shows like The Righteous Gemstones, where it's about, like, money laundering in a mega church that's like a hit on HBO. Like, there's, like, that constant running theme of people being shady, terrible people, mm-hmm. but then promoting that spirituality and that Christianity and, like, religion and church and everything and i will say it is unfortunate because i feel like our experience kind of adds to that stereotype like i i mean i don't really know anything that completely flipped that stereotype for me or like pot like huge re- impactful positive experiences from that school where you're like oh wow that's not like this at all yeah there were a few good people but they're good people. Kind of on one hand, I, in the administration, that's a whole other story. And the I way know. these parents were so involved and in down these teachers' backs was weird. Like, yeah, ooh, they really like tried the to boys. be friends. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Our talent, talent show. show. Oh, like in our talent show, um, I remember everybody was obsessed with the show America's Got Talent. No, it was, it was the boys. Voice. Oh, the voice. We were trying to figure out who was going to be the judges on that. And so why don't we have auditions? And this woman, and also we were close with this girl at the time. She wanted her daughter to be... Christina Aguilera, one yeah, of the judges. exactly. And I wanted to be Christina Aguilera too. Because I, I didn't want to just sit there. And so we should have auditions. But anyway, that somehow upset her to have a democracy. So... 
From that moment on, she hated me, and her daughter proceeded to tell me at soccer practice I was a horrible person. Her mom hated me. Also, why did I but, even care? Oh, yeah, why do we but care about I, the But girl? also, I was fighting her right back. I'm like, Looking like deep and I said, and you know what my mom says? She says, like, your mom is rude, all this stuff. <laughs> I don't know. Because that's I know I was just saying that to her. I, yeah. Also, I'm like, might as well. <laughs> the thing is, like, sometimes, well, I feel like this happened for a lot of kids, but the parents would be involved with, like, bullying the kids, which was crazy, because there is one kid that, um, you know, he was, like, every, I feel like every grade, you're going to deal with something that's a little bit different, but to me, people fueling that and making fun of the person, literally, it just triggers me like nothing else, because I think it's just so insane, and um, we were doing audition, they were doing their voice auditions, um, where they would have to sing or do something. It wasn't the style of the voice, but it was just a talent show. And yeah. this one kid just came on. He was just doing his yo-yo tricks, just oh, okay. living his life, living his life, was, doing but... his tricks. <laughs> and he was good. Like, give him a break. And they had this button from Staples. I don't even know if, like, Gen Alpha even knows what staples is but it was a button and you hit it and it says that was easy oh, I which was the that. staples slogan at the time and throughout his performance they kept hitting that was easy but it was like a red that was, buzzer it was like but it was supposed buzzer. to be like a red buzzer on like you board. were on um, like you're eliminated like you were getting eliminated off of a talent competition and the parents just snickering at this kid and laughing because they would facilitate our um practices for this you know talent show was crazy and then i'll never forget sydney and savannah and our other friend they like went up to the front oh no, it was me i it was me i remember two of our other friends i said um yeah and sydney wasn't there we say it wasn't in it we saying that jennifer hudson song. they sang yeah, spotlight by jennifer we were hudson. told it was <laughs> and basically they and the thing that made it hard to watch obviously you say your perspective what made it hard to watch on my end is that everyone was talking over you guys when you were singing, but the yeah, parents were, hear. the kids were quiet, but the parents were like making fun of you guys when you were singing. And it's kind of like a, you know, R&B at this yes, really like, white Christian her school hips. was a Probably. choice. Yes. yes, was a choice. And they're like, okay, she's swinging her hips, which is really weird because you were 11. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. But then basically, um, there's like this part where she says what the hell in the song at the bridge but we didn't they didn't say, they didn't that, say so it matter. and it's just the fact that they knew they they knew it was a bad word right because you went what the and it just you just kept seeing the song it wasn't that deep when i say they literally were like stop that's enough and then one of the moms went wah wah wah, wah. i remember oh, that too what? that was crazy she might as well have gone like this it was just so <laughs> weird i was like she is really having her high school moment um, but they also yeah. don't want you to sing it because it pertained to love. They, right. I remember I sang Adele and they said that was inappropriate. So I think yeah. that was the main thing yeah. too. So but that just added was, to it. Do you know what annoyed me? There was this song called I Love the Way You Hold Me, but it reminded me of that South Park episode where we just replaced all the sex, like the person with Jesus. Cause that could be about a relationship. But who was singing but that? Who was singing that? Taylor was saying, "I love the way." Oh uh, yeah, but they knew but they, that was a popular yeah. Christian exactly. song at the time, so but I feel like there wouldn't be yeah, any. That was a Christian. I know it was a Christian song. song. I know. I disclaimer. You. I know it was a Christian song, but I'm saying if you no, say a song, saying. "I love the way you hold me," you assume that's '90s R&B to any mass art audience. Like people would not think that's. But the, but that school is so niche. They would all know. Yeah, obviously, but they never. So to sum it up as a whole, in terms of the talent show. Only sing Christian songs. Apparently, don't play with the yo yo. <laughs> right. You can believe. But we say we had Cleveland is my city. That was. Oh, they yeah. loved anything about the USA. USA. They're very patriotic. So yeah. that was fine. Or like Cleveland. Like you can talk about the Cavs. Like I remember that was the only pop culture thing we had was LeBron. Or Ohio State. Yeah. That he was, was like an okay black. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to bring they up. liked. But I was happy that this school ended in sixth grade. Everybody else went off to a little Christian school. And then I love how we went right back to the school we came from, which just oh, this, just that was, that was the hardest that. year of my life. It wasn't even well, one that. I felt like our parents were really about individualized education because where we came from it was a good school and whatnot. But I don't know. I guess they thought this little Christian school was better, but you could tell it wasn't by the carpet in the gym. Right. Right. I think of that. Anyone who's gonna step foot in there, personally, I wouldn't pay. But that's just me. Uh, you you don't have to go there to know that. 
But I think it also brings to a bigger point that education is powerful, of course. Like, we're not knocking, like, good fundamentals. Mm -hmm. Also, it's powerful being yeah. able to talk to people, being able to socialize, and being in the now. Oh, because gosh. considering we were considered the fast ones in that school, but then you go somewhere else, and it's like... I thought we were from a different century and we were kind of with it. fast, never, which just means that we like pop culture. Yeah, we like yeah. pop culture like, and that was all you could explore. And then you go, right. like, I would go to ice skating and be out of the loop of so many things. I just mm. feel like that school definitely took years off of confidence, being able to socialize, especially being thrown into public school. Yeah. So, Can I, I don't know if I recommend. One thing, though, about the education, I felt like I hid this when we went off to the school that we went to from eighth grade to high school. That um going to NBCS made me so good at spelling. I could have competed in all those spelling bees, but I pretended to be bad at spelling. Oh, one hundred percent. I so, felt like I knew how to write. Some people too. didn't I know how like, to. Oh my god, do the most basic things. At least I thought it was basic because we had learned it in second grade. But the fundamentals are great, so mm -hmm. we knew what we were doing. Right, and I feel like I was just so smart. Like, and I don't know if that was just because there was honestly nothing else to do but learn. If I'm gonna keep it real, like social life wasn't really there. You didn't have any dances. You didn't have those like pivotal parts of middle school you where you had the speech meets. Right, we didn't, fair. we didn't even have that Halloween parade. Like, you don't have those big school coming together things that does not have to do with learning or religion. So I feel like my brain like I could memorize anything that's why I was like maybe I should just been a child actor I give me a script I would know that thing in 15 minutes I was so like on I love my brain memorizing. was on fire and now, I feel like that school really yeah. taught you how to memorize stuff it um, did which was good because you're kind of like a little computer you could just spit information out um but then I will say like going to like Solon after that and just going to seventh grade was the most jarring terrible experience because I felt like bits and pieces of me were still coming back together but I kind of felt like I had just like seen the sun like I just didn't know what anything was Same. I didn't know what lingo was I remember like the summer before I was so on the internet I was on YouTube learning but then those were like the older girls I was learning like what 16 year olds were up to and like beauty gurus and like that stuff but I didn't know things that were like my age I know the top 100 on the radio like, it was really Yeah, weird. I just didn't realize how people socialize with each yes. other in seventh grade because, I don't know, our school, I felt like we just... It was such a... And yeah. it was kids Dang. that you knew since basically so you were seven years old all the way up until you were 12 years old. There wasn't... There was barely anyone new to come in, so you never met new kids. Like, we only had how many boys in our class? Four, and I had a little crush on every single one since there were no options. <laughs> and... I felt like there was no, like, no one new came in. So you yeah. can't socialize with anyone else. But I also think that this just, to me, reflecting on this experience, just shows me how easy it is for kids to absorb good things and bad things because it makes sense why some people are racist or whatnot just because of their upbringing. Yeah. I just remember being so, like, shocked that... Um leggings and like i knew what things were trending but i didn't know how far it went to the point where you could wear it to school that Even was like a big Uggs. thing we would wear baggy like, leggings <laughs> yeah. leggings and uggs like my mom i'm not no yeah those no to her she insane. considered leggings to be inappropriate which girl like but she also didn't let us watch disney we were in so it, seventh it matches grade <laughs> we didn't know who hannah montana picked in the finale oh, i didn't know she, i didn't I still even don't know went to carly i don't know any of that we were just PBS kids. And I was always, I was talking to my one friend the other day and we were like, we can tell the dif difference between a PBS kid and a kid that was growing up on that Nick Disney channel. But the PBS, PBS kids transitioned to so, like Disney channel No, we were all, we were watching saying PBS the ones that 13. watched Arthur until they were like, <laughs> yeah, that's what yeah. they basically saying. Um, but it was just so interesting. I will never forget. I really wanted some um, justice made. I remember ombre. It was like, it was like the galaxy mustache ombre type of stuff. Those were all the trending things. And I just wanted these justice ombre leggings for my birthday. That's all I wanted. And my mom, who believed that they should be pants and not leggings, got me like size four X. Keep in mind, I'm like, uh, I'm literally like, I'm still four feet tall. Like I'm still very short and little. And they were so baggy and I just really wanted to like match what the cool girls were wearing. I, and it's just such a core memory. And I was going to choir class and Cindy and Savannah were in my choir class for seventh grade at this new school. 
and I had a belt on my ombre leggings to try to like make them they had tighter. A belt. They had a belt. And they, cause yeah. they had belts. Like, they were jeggy. Yeah, they and they were jeggings, but they were supposed the to be tight and yeah, cute. Yeah, yeah, and you're yeah, supposed to put them in your little legs and stuff. And I will never forget the girls at the front were laughing at me. They were literally, they were, they were hee hee ha ha whatever it was just so embarrassing and then I was like oh man I should have changed my outfit like why did I wear this I remember just being so embarrassed and that I mean that pretty much sums up the whole year I was just like embarrassed to be there honestly it's so weird interesting because I still remember though um obviously they probably were laughing at Samantha so not to invalidate I remember though multiple people always say to me you and your sisters had the best clothes Same. at the school that's crazy so anyway but also I remember Samantha's outfit I want to insert a picture you know those little sparkly Uggs which every single girl has Samantha was wearing those with pr the purple ones with the um with the or no Samantha was wearing plain purple uh yeah purple with, um the leggings so she was wearing all but sorts of I yeah, we had the looked crazy like I looked crazy I <laughs> I looked crazy I remember my outfit so I was wearing a white shirt like the white shirt that's just the, the leg, justice yeah. shirt those really big the, those pants that were clinging on my body for dear life and my puffy purple Uggs and they were they were making yeah, fun because the, the back of my pants were so it. bunched up I could have been <laughs> yeah, straight back that would look bad drinking that loop yes yeah, I would that would be and the, it's a good thing I was like I should just use my sewing machine just taking it in oh, either way yeah, I was just so <laughs> I know but <laughs> we didn't know just buy I pants know, but we were like right. almost 13 I, I should it's fine like it was just so rough but basically if you want more stories about how we're in a cult, because we have more stories. Like, I feel like we kept it honestly pretty tame. Well, in my head, yeah, we kept same. it pretty yeah. tame. Um, it doesn't look as bad. It looks kind of... It, we, there, we, I mean, I don't really think it we, made it look good, but... It didn't. When um, Sydney started off by saying we were in a cult, I was like, what? I, I was a little shot. <laughs> I mean, now, we were a little indoctrinated. Yeah, I felt like they tried, and people really were into it, too. Mm -hmm. I think it really did change the trajectory of people's lives, because I go on Instagram and social media just to get people up to, and I think everyone follows their own path, but it really does show that where you start yeah. does impact where you end up uh, when it comes to like, social and culturally. Yeah. Because finding some of these classmates on social media, if dying. they had it, was... Hard. Uh, hard to do. And Sydney's good. And I'm, I can find anybody. Right? Yeah. That's my special skill, but I, I can't even find half these people. Not I, I want to know what they're up to. I but think because they only have Facebook and not Instagram. Yeah, they have Facebook, not Instagram. They haven't updated in a while, but it really, it was just interesting looking back and saying like half of them are getting married. I don't want this to come as judgment or anything. I think half of them do already have babies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So people's trajectory really do change after being in that Christian environment. No, it's not bad at all. It's just I just think it's interesting. Okay. It depends on what you want to do. And that and was our And it just shows it. where you came. It just shows where you came from. I feel like it almost made you a child for less time. I don't know how to explain it. Mm -hmm. As much as they were like, that's inappropriate, that's bad, that's sinful. Because, I mean, after that, you want to get to it. Like, right. You're already... Because you're just... <laughs> Because you're just in such a strict environment, it makes you an adult. The second 18 hits, you want a family. So and they a lot still do look like they're from the 80s. Yeah, kind of it, bold it is, haircut. Yeah, yeah and it's, it's not, not even giving Justin Bieber. No, back. Yeah, it's it's, 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 it's eight like five no, years back. It was like especially in the Midwest, you would be surprised at how many people. It can be a time capsule. You can never yeah. see the sun if you don't want to. It's not like New York. Where you can just go outside and you see everybody and someone looks like they're from the eight. No, no, everyone can look like that if you want that to happen. Like people don't get it. Yeah, but I also feel like these people don't even venture into Cleveland. But that's my point. That's our point. Like you, like, you don't have to see anybody. In the bubble, yeah, yeah. And, and literally your neighbors all look the same too. So yeah, not, you don't have to see anyone. You really wouldn't see much. And yeah, you're trolling like as long what as you're media going you to... consume and stuff. So you just go to the bank. Go even to going to a grocery Home store. Home Depot. The grocery store we went to over there felt old. To it me. was crazy. But just to say, I feel like in general, be cautious of what you absorb and what you learn. And don't take everything as a fact because half of what they were saying to us was terrible. See, yeah, I feel like that should be aimed at parents, though, because... Yeah. We didn't right. send ourselves there. Right. I would have never done it to begin with. I feel like we always used to complain to our mom about it back when we were in middle school and high oh, school. We were so vocal. That's what I'm just saying. Yes. Like. And we tried, but we turned out great. It worked and right. being fine, but it, it was a journey. And so it, I would have been happy yeah. to skip all that because it did yeah. strip away a lot of different 
honestly high school middle school experiences too so yeah don't recommend don't think i'll be sending my kid to a religious school in general after this no. experience i'm scarred but again grateful to have been gotten the education but yeah 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 i think the last thing i'll say is personally i just feel like education is very important but also i feel like education can also be what you make of it what you want to apply yourself towards as well i'm not giving the whole pay yourself up by the bootstraps crap that's not what i'm saying i'm saying that i feel like people look down on public schools look down on different like for example like community college education is what you make it and what you seek out you can even get your degree online but it's those social skills and those fundamental human development things the way it took me it caught up with me until like high school i was still figuring it out junior year junior year is where there was a turning point right but it just shows how much i honestly had to learn to just like function like everybody else to be honest and yeah like yeah, I, yeah that's what i was saying earlier i just think obviously it's good to be able to recite things and read things and memorize things but if you can't socialize and you can't apply yourself i feel like that's honestly half the battle like at this point we already know like networking and all that so yeah but at least keep that in mind yeah when, i guess going to and your parents kids keep school, this in mind or parents listen up because Hopefully, it'll save one kid or another. I also, I feel like we were there the chanting propaganda. That would be we were to pull you out. And be, How do we even last there? But anyway, yeah, that's, yeah, that was questionable. And also, why am I paying for education when I gotta reteach you at home? So, right, it was I crazy. We sounded crazy when I say we would go up to our cousin and just I know. I we tried to convert our co oh, <laughs> I tried to suppress that memory. <laughs> I only walked down that lane. It's not our fault. We didn't want everyone to go to hell. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It wasn't our fault. <laughs> I forgot. We about didn't. That. We just thought our whole family would end up in hell for some reason. We were just so scared. For some reason, they told us. Well, they told us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It wasn't our fault. Yeah. But yeah, if you have any crazy stories from your elementary school, or just from growing up in general, or interesting religious stories too, just from being at church or wherever, feel free to share them with us. We'd love to hear. Leave a comment or send us a DM. And on that note, I hope y'all had a good Halloween. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, because they didn't believe They didn't believe in that. They literally said people or were demons. dressed up in their actual demons, dressed up like, in costume, <laughs> and that scared me so much. <laughs> and they also so told us about the... There's but so much to unpack. trick or treating. Yeah, we still trick-or-treated. But like, I was had the so experience, scared. But I was so scared. It was definitely really scary. And <laughs> yeah. they also told us that spirits existed all around you at all times, and that... And that they would, night. and if they felt away, they could take you. They could take you, yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know where says that in the bible but someone correct me if i'm wrong but it does yeah so right. thank you for listening this was fun yeah and we'll catch you next time